<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Tehillim 148, day two, and hopefully final day, uh, because I am out of ideas. <laughs> no, I, I think I got the main idea with Ken, and there are some loose ends to tie up. Uh, but there's that, yeah. Um, but uh, I think we're going to get like the bulk of it. Okay, so let's quickly review the facts. I uh, clean up the translation a little bit like uh, I did last time. Hallelujah, 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 min. So, hallelujah, praise Hashem from the heavens, praise Him on the heights. I think we ended up deciding that this is uh, telling the angels to praise God, right? Um, and that praise Him on the heights is not. We, all the readings we're trying to do, praise the one who is in the heights, that doesn't work out. Uh, the angels or us, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I did not look that up. Yeah, I'll have to try to remember to do that. Um, yeah, I forgot. I, I made a big deal about that last time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his legions. Uh, plain shot is legions is referring to all of the entities that are going to be in the next uh, tube Um Hallelujah, Shemesh Viarea, Hallelujah, Kokoch Veor, praise him, sun and moon, praise him, all illuminating stars, uh, or at least in Puzzle Gimel, right? All the uh, heavenly array. Hallelujah, Shemei Hashemayim, praise him, the highest heavens, Vahamayim, Asher Mi'al Hashemayim, and the waters that are above the heavens. Yahalu es Shem Arnai Kihu Tziva Vnivrao, they will praise the name of Hashem. So this is not in the imperative, this is in the future. They will praise the name of Hashem, for he commanded and they were created. Um, uh, and he set them up forever and ever. Uh, he established a decree or he issued a decree and it will not be violated. So just plain shot here, which I, I don't remember if we talked about last time. So um, I don't want to get into angels, but what is the basic definition of angel? Like force of nature? Right. So the wrong says that it's forces of nature. Um, uh, let me reframe the question here. Basic definition of uh, of angel according to the like. Um... Uh, no, no, I guess I'm going to the Okay, I'll just I'll just spit it out. Okay, um, do angels have intellects? Yes, they are intellects, right? Yeah, they are intellects. Uh, how you reconcile that with the wrong is 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 an interesting question. Like, you have to broadly expand your definition of intellect. But the point is, is that. That it is, uh, you know, I, I think it's unanimous that uh, angels have intellects. That's why the Rishon call them sechali nifradim, uh, unembodied intellects. They're pure intellect. Okay. Um, next question: Do uh, do the sun and moon and stars have intellects? No. So we know that they don't, right? But back then, they thought that they they um, they well, okay, they thought that the spheres had intellects, and among the heavenly bodies, there are. Um, they, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not a uh, uh, Bucky in this, but um, but that the, the the basic belief was that the motion of the heavens could only be explained by the fact that they were being moved by intellects. Okay, so like the Rambam maintains that the 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 celestial bodies have intellects in some way. Again, you have to greatly expand your definition of, of what intellect is. Um, I think Moshe Zucker was the one who made the joke of like. You know, you need to consult a, a, an astro neurologist. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, but so so the uh, it's unclear what to make of this in terms of the then being described as praising God. So in the most literal meaning, it, it means that that they actually you know it was believed that these things actually are engaging in praise of God. Now, if you don't want to say that, uh, then it means that we praise God based on these things. Right, meaning that we look at this, like for example, we say, all right, here, here's a, a, a an example. Hashemayim and the Sakrim Kavod Kal, the heavens declare the glory of God. Either that means that the heavenly bodies literally declare, not in words, right, but cogn cognize and like contemplate like the uh, the 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 Shemayim, or it means that that we can see the Kavach Mayim in the heavens, and it's therefore it's, it, as if the heavens are declaring the uh, praises of God. Yeah. You say it's like we can see it. Like, when the sun and the moon are, let's say, doing their thing in there. Yeah. The world of the yeah. Like, isn't that just on its own a declaration of... So I was... Like, yeah. Without people, like, recognizing it. So I, it's a good question, philosophically, about whether you would call it a, uh, a praising of Hashem if there were no human beings to recognize it. Uh, like if, if there were, let me rephrase it, if there were no intellects in the universe, 
could it be described as a praise of Hashem? You know, seems like you need some mind somewhere to recognize it in order for it to be praise of Hashem. But you're right in principle, and and this is an analogy that I thought. So I'll give you an analogy that this is what uh, helped me at least. So let's say you have a really, really, really okay. So let's say you have an architect, okay, that no one has seen and no one knows, but like other architects praise him. So fine, they're praising him, and you, non-architect, like are gonna just you know like hear it or whatever. But let's say like you see the magnificence of the building that the architect described, the building itself functions as a praise in the sense that it is basically a, a billboard for the glory of the intellect. Like it is manifesting the glory of the intellect and you can recognize it from that. And that's really what praise is. Praise is a an expression of your recognition of the perfection or superiority of, of, of something. So, so that's why I'm saying praise has to, be in an intellect, but the thing that is like, uh, you know, an instrument of praise, you know, can be something that is not sentient, you know? Right. I don't think so. And I'm, I'm not sure though. Like, I just don't see how they, I mean, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of like, I mean, it's not like if a tree falls in the forest. Like, like, it just seems like it is a great thing that they do, the thing that the chef will them to do. Right. But praise, I feel like, has praise stems from a recognition well, I mean, of greatness. The problem is that it's like, doing that, like, it's from recognition, but also, whether or not someone makes a decision, things like that, and it's some kind of great Right, um, but, but 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 demonstrating the perfection. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's the problem. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So let, let, let me let me uh, put that on on hold for a second because uh, I, I think I actually I accidentally jumped the gun. Okay, um, I should have really uh, held this discussion until after we went through the parrot. Okay, you'll see why. Um, so now we switch to the earthly stuff. We said that the, the cleanest division seems to be, even though we made a lot of other divisions, <laughs> one through six is the celestial realm, and then seven through the end is the terrestrial realm. And then the Mepharshim say that by and large. Um, so seven is Mahalulu S Adonai Miha'ars Tani Nim Voltomos, praise Hashem from the earth, giant creatures or sea creatures, and all depths. Ish Ubarad Shalik Vikitor Ruch Sa'ara Osadavaro. Uh, fire and hail, snow and smoke, storm wind. And we kind of inserted the words, each of them do his will, because Osa de Vero is singular. Um, uh, you could read it as, as mm-hmm. semicolon, the storm wind does his will. I feel like it reads smoother if you say that each of them does his will, even though you have to add in the words, each of them. The hills and all of the mountains, or the mountains, all of the hills, each breathe the whole the fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and every animal, um, sorry, uh, uh, the creeping creatures and the winged birds, uh, kings of the land and all regimes, Sarim um, of the arts, rulers and all judges of the land, Bahurim Bagambasulas, bachelors and bachelorettes, Zakinim Imna Arim, elders with youths, Ye Halalu Ashem Hashem, they will praise the name of Hashem, Kiniskav Shemalavado, for his name is exalted uh, alone, Hodo Al Eretz Vashemayim, his majesty or his glory is over the heavens, uh, the earth and the heavens, Vayarim Karen Le Amo, Tihila Lechol, and he will raise the horn of his people, Tihila Lechol Hasidav. Uh, praise for all of his pious ones, for Ben Israel, for for Ben Israel, Amkrobo, his close nation, Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, one thing I noticed is that clearly everything in that list that's going to praise Hashem, um, from uh, nine to thirteen. Yeah. Um, not everything that has the intellect. Okay, good. Right. So this is where I jumped the gun. Okay, not everything here has the intellect. So. So the question is like, how are those things praising Hashem? Okay, and this is where we. So uh, are you ready for the big move? <laughs> uh, so th- I, mean, I alluded to you last time, I said that there's one Ramam that unlocks the whole thing. And the Ramam is in the end of Yesodia Torah Gimel, where he's talking about Maser Breshis, and he's talking about the elements, okay? And how the elements, uh, everything on earth is made up of the elements and the elements have different tendencies, like uh, fire goes up and earth goes down and water, et cetera. Okay, so here's the Ramam. And we have all of our questions, which we'll have to circle back to try to answer. Ramam says like this, um, 
Let me get as big as possible. Uh, oh, that's too big. Uh, let me close this. Okay, so our ba'a gufos ha'elu. So these four elemental bodies, because he's talking about the actual like um, physicality of the elements, I believe, if I remember correctly. Okay, this is way too big. <laughs> I guess it was fine before. Okay, enon bali nefesh. They do not have souls. Ve'enon yodin v'lomakirin. They do not have knowledge nor recognition. Elak gufi mesin. They are inanimate bodies. They're like dead bodies. Ve'yish l'cho inanimate is a better translation because it's not like they were living and they died. Ve'yish l'cho echad v'echad minhag she'eno yodo. Each of them has a, a, a minhag, a behavior that it doesn't know, or like a pattern of, of action that it doesn't know, and, and that it doesn't comprehend, and it cannot change. David, um, And this, that David Melch said, uh, and he just quotes from seven and eight, praise Hashem from the earth, sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail and snow and smoke. Inyan Hadvarim, the idea behind this is Hallelujah Bene Adam, praise him, O you human beings, Migvurosab Shatir U Baesh Uvarad Ufshar Bruin from or based on the Gvura, the might that you see in the fire and the hail of Shar Bruin and in the other Creation shatir l'madmin harakia um, that you see beneath the uh, the firmament shigvurasam tami nikeres l'gadol ubekatan whose might is evident to uh, is is like always evident to everyone great and small. Okay, so in one sentence, <laughs> the Ram is answering a bunch of questions and giving us an uh, opening to to uh, um, understand the pair. So first of all, regarding your observation that these things are not living or not intellectual creatures, right? And not even living necessarily, right? Like if it says, if you take it literally, yeah, certainly the fire and the hail are not living, but even all depths, like claim shot is, I don't think that's the creatures in the depths. It's saying like the depths themselves. Otherwise it would say hold the gay hayam or something, you know? So it, what it means is that the, those things can't actually praise God, but we human beings can recognize God's gura in those things and praise God uh, 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 based on that, you know, and I think for us, if we, we no longer think that the celestial spirit, well, we know that there are no celestial spheres, but we don't look at the heavenly bodies as having intellects. I think it's reasonable for us to expand this to the heavenly bodies as well. And to take that definition of Hashemayim Sovereign Kvod Kel, that like we can praise God based on the, the, the heavens. Yeah. David. This sounds very similar to that, which we say in Hallel of the Mahayam Kitanus Herodin yeah. But that same type of thing, like all these, like looking to nature and then from there. Right. Finding for that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is a theme throughout Tilm. Like it also says in Barchi Nafshi, there's this theme and in, in other stuff as well. So the question is then, oh, so that, that's like what the, um, uh, what do you call it? That's what the, uh, um, the bulk of the parak is about. Okay, now just as a side note, and I'm going to only mention this because uh, Ken and I had this really good idea, and then we realized it didn't work out grammatically. So if anyone can salvage it, then it might work. So we thought when we were reading it that the praise Hashem from the earth continues all the way to here. Okay. Um, and what it, we thought it was saying is that uh, just like we praise Hashem when we see the Gevura in the animals and fire and the hail on the mountains and the hills, we also praise Hashem when we see the Gevura of the kings of the land and all the regimes and when we see the different people of different ages and stuff like that. And it was basically taught, and we, we, we developed a whole approach based on the idea that human beings are not only able to reflect on the Gvura in creation, but we can reflect on our own species and see the Gvura Hashem as manifest in that. And there is a bracha that we say on kings of um, 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 like we say that the Kvod Shemaim is evident in kings. And like when you when you see like uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, example, you ever seen like pictures that families have that are like the the new baby and like the, like the, you know, like the mother and then the grandmother and then the great grandmother, the great, you know, there is a certain glura in seeing like the span of the human creature. In fact, we even call it where we say, um, 
into Helen. See, I brought my scissors this time. Uh, into Helen, I would say on uh, Tila Lamosha. Uh, you can say it if you know what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah. Yemesha no sena behem shivim shana. The the numbers of their years are seventy years. Be in biguros shmoni shana. But if it uh, is with gvura, then seven, then it's uh, eighty years. You know. So there's a gvura in like old age. And seeing that like young people can like grow up into old people, you know. So that's how we wanted to read it. Yeah, Chaim, you had a question. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the problem, right? Problem is you have to say something is the they that is praising Hashem, Yehalel uh, Hashem Hashem. And once you have that, yeah. Like we will praise it, like. They'll all be in praise to us, like, because that's how the Ram. Well, Yahalu is they will praise the name of Hashem, right? So who's the they? I think it has to go on the, the 12. So I think it has to go on the 12 because the only thing after it is it doesn't ever refer. I mean, if you want to say it goes all the way to like, that's a big stretch sentence. Don't we mean they will praise us the same way we do at five and one? Um, in five and one, and so mean praise in the way the Rambam means praise, right? But the um, hold on a second here. Okay, what was the problem? <laughs> okay, so one you can say command, two is command, three is command, four is command, and then five is a description of what they're doing, right? That's that's what we want to say there, right? Here, seven is a command, and that command lasts through twelve, right. Does that work? Why why did why do we think that this doesn't work? We got very disappointed. And 13 will be a description of, of what, what they, they did. did. Yeah, why doesn't that work? Why do... that does seem to work? They oh you know why? Because uh if you learn it that all these things are intellects, then they can all praise Hashem. But you're not gonna be able to say that the they goes on all of these things. Okay, but that's okay, fine. Yeah, but so that's, that's why we. The, that's not the move we're making from the Rambam. Uh, right. So the move we're making from the Rambam, the, the Rambam, right? The Rambam is saying um, that the human beings are engaging in praise, right? Um, and he's getting that from the fact that these are inanimate uh, entities, right? So, I mean, what works out according to the Rambam is. I mean, according to the Rambam, all of the the only thing that's doing the praising is the human beings. But the human beings are seeing God to and all these things, right? So the, the human being, we can also, the human being can also be an example of God to Like, if, right. If both, like, yeah, I just, I feel, I, I think it doesn't read well like that. One can be telling, talking to the human being, saying, you know, praise the Shem, mm -hmm. all these things. Yeah. And then, but 13 and 5 can both be like reflecting on the things it's just talking about as, like, how they are. Yeah. I really, I see. I, I like what you're saying, but I don't know if I like it because I'm prejudiced because I like the the idea and I'm forcing them, forcing them to read. Either, yeah, e either way, it's a true idea, and e and the more conservative read is definitely to say that the they will praise the name of Hashem is just referring to the human beings, and that also unifies better with the parak in the sense that that especially according to our our current knowledge that the heavenly bodies don't have intellects, that that we are the ones who are praising God based on all of these things, you know. Um, so the pro the question though, so th that seems to be the, the bulk of the pair. Okay, the question though is, what's that last puzzle doing? Vayarim. Wait, can I ask a question about the read sure. from so far? Yeah. Um, okay, so I I also like the idea, so maybe I also just wanted to work, but I I, I hear the um, the problem with you know not not um, not having the people be doing the praising in thirteen, but like yeah. it's not problematic exactly but it's like a little bit weird that you have this sort of continuous list of stuff that just yeah. breaks in this place that we lost yeah yeah might break right that is true i think that's what prompted us to go there in the first place that like it's a list and there's no reason to think that the list ends uh you know unless you have to end it at yahalalu but it seems like one list that's from the the praise yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm, I'm warming up to the idea again yeah Sorry, again. sure well, I'll try a different angle. okay what if 13 is saying both things and they will put those those in twelve. Yeah. The Meaning they are objects of praise and they are subjects of yeah. praise. Yeah. Meaning that they they are the thing that uh, that is the basis of our praise, and then we are the things that. The thirteen is also going back on the whole. Yeah. So I'll, 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 uh, yeah. 
They sound like objection noises. <laughs> yeah. Can we go over the problem? Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it's okay. I don't even know if it's if if it rises to the level of a problem, but you have this command, Halulu es Hashem, uh, Min Haaretz, right? Uh, and that introduces all these things that are praising God from the land. And then it's just a. Okay, that's one When he met me, uh, a man, when I was like, in, in hay, yeah. Like, that, that's angels. Right, yeah. So this, this, we're going with the Ramam Shabbat, that it means man should praise God from the earth, from the Gvur that he sees in the earth. So the Gvur he sees in the Taninim, the Gvur he sees in the Tomos, the Gvur he sees in, in the stuff in eight, the stuff in nine, the stuff in ten, and the gavur he sees in the malchei eretz b'chol lumim, the gavur he sees in the sarim b'chol shofte you know, and then da 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 da, and then the list ends at the end of twelve, and then I and then we were saying ye halalu, they should praise Hashem, which I guess you could just say is bnei adam, human beings, right? Yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, as Hashem kiniskav shemol levado. Um, uh, because his name is exalted over everything, meaning that God is the cause of, of this entire, um, uh, of anything that is praiseworthy in all these things, God is the cause of, yeah. Also, the reason why I'm in trouble, we are saying with the word, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. If it were to have been like, they are, or they like reflect praise of Hashem, that would otherwise, if that were to have been the word that would have fit perfectly smoothly for you. Um... Then you would have just read it as these things are praise Yeah, praise. right, right. Yeah, in the same way that, I, that I'm, I'm currently... Be told to act here. Um, okay, well, I, I'm going to state this differently and tell me if this is what you were saying. Sure. If, so the first Yehalalu, we can say that all of the things above are doing the praising, either because they have intellects or because we are um, praising God based on them. Yeah. But they're all in the same category as the, is, is this the thing. <laughs> right. Right. Is is basically taking the Ramam's idea and applying it even to that. So so so. Right. Yeah. All right. You told me. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's what I mean. I got. I got. I got to talk to Ken and uh, uh, and and see see if uh, if he can convince me the other way again. <laughs> yeah. So then I got to tell you another idea Ken said, which mm-hmm. is. Uh, he also tried to ex- now. I, I hope I do this justice. He also tried to explain the difference of the key. Okay, so we noticed that in. Let me just uh, get rid of the highlighters for a second here. Yahalu Hashem Hashem ki hu tivav nivrau. So praise the name of Hashem because He commanded and they were created. And then for us, for human beings, it's Yahalu Hashem Hashem ki niskav shemo levado hodo al eretz v'shamayim. So the question that we had was, why isn't it also true that we should praise Hashem because He commanded and we were created? Yeah. Well, this maybe maybe David wouldn't use this terminology, but maybe it's the difference between like Hashkaf for practice, like Hashem set up a very basic system in this not basic, but the general system in the stars and the, yeah. And then there's like Hashem has like a greater extent of like Hashkaf on the lower realm of the earth where He like, you know, He did this whole. Like people exalted, I don't know exactly how to read it into this, but like in the top area, he commanded and they were created. Yeah. In the lower area, he, his name is exalted here because there's like this more specific thing that he does in the lower realm. Yeah, the, the Malvin tries to take an approach like that. Um, uh, and uh, I didn't quite understand it either. And I mean, like glory is more than just like they do, it's like the glory is here. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, uh, there's also another thing that, um, I don't know if this is a completely different idea or if it just like fits into the word that you're saying that someone, I've got one of the Mepharshim says that Hutsiva Nibrao, Bara has a connotation of Yeshme Ayin. So it was just a like Tivui bang, you know, we're at, well, like literally big bang, but, uh, but, um, <laughs> um, but with the stuff on earth, there was a whole process. Uh, and so it's a different kind of, um, of, of thing, but I, I, I don't know what that is. Uh, or uh, how to work that out. So I, what Ken wanted to say, I, I'm not going to do it justice. I'm going I'm to spit out the words. And, uh, you know, like like uh, the the Tanaim who would just like have memorized like really good ideas, but like they didn't understand them. So I'm going to spit out the words. Uh, what was it? 
<laughs> oh, not that I need. Actually, I wrote it down. It was like the only notes I wrote down when Ken and I were doing this. Uh, mm -hmm. Those guys. No. Yeah, yeah, they called them Tanayim, right? Yeah, but not like the Tanayim of the Mishnah. They were like, the, yeah. Um, unless you're thinking of donkeys carrying books. Yeah. Oh, so here's my notes. We we transcend our own existence through our powers of observations. We are not self-centered, limited to praising because we were created. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, so what was the idea? What was the idea? Is that, um, that the higher creations are... They just, do. they just do the program. They they just like like you know it, it actually fits in very well with the Ramam's words. Um, they their praise that they're engaged in, so to speak, is just operating based on the minhag that they were given that they can't change and they don't even know. We have that, but we can go above that and recognize the full majesty of the entire universe and including ourselves and like reflect on ourselves and realize that hodo al eretz v'shamayim that God's glory is over the heavens with all the heavenly creations and over the earth with all of the terrestrial stuff, you know? So it's a, it's not that, like when I asked the question initially, it was, aren't we also, didn't God also command and we were created? So why are we negating that from from mm -hmm. this, from human beings? Answer is no, we're not negating it. It's we have that plus. It's not just that we are operating like automatons and that's how we praise God. It's that, that we were created and we praise God because we're created, but we also recognize the full majesty over everything. You know, okay, so now the, the, the big question that we worked on for a while was how that last puzzle fits in. Okay, and classic Robert Alter, okay, uh, says, uh, some want to say that this was just a later scribal edition that like the, uh, the you know, the, uh, that, that was added afterwards. It doesn't really fit in. But then uh, he also acknowledges uh, 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 that it fits in thematically. So I, I obviously I'm going to assume it fits in thematically. And the question is how? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, we, we have, what was it? Mm -hmm. Alter? Yeah. Alter is the one we use for the, uh, as one of our three English translations in Mishlei. Uh -huh. um, yeah, um, he's a modern translator. We have to explain what horn is though, right? Just to get shot. So what is the horn? So let me just show you two things. What was it? Yeah. It doesn't. You were thinking like shofar horn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we don't call that a Karen. I think we say shofar when we mean okay. that there. Um, so uh, the Matsuist Tzion says, and I don't quite get the muscle fully, on Yodalit says, Hishilu Hamila Hahi, Lihis Khazkus Umem Shala Al Kibale Hakaran Yiskazkubo, Bihilahmam Im Mi. Uh so they uh it's an allegory. This word is is, is a, an analogy or an allegory for strength and dominion, because horned animals, when they want to overpower each other, fight with their horns. Okay, so like horn means like dominion and the best interpretation i found of that was another of the mafarshim you don't have in fact we already know who it is it is pirish mechachmet sarfas anonymous pirish from france okay uh which is not even entire uh, it's not even complete so what does they what does the anonymous pirish say it says um the arm karen lamo uh oh sorry sorry these are two different things sorry matus david gives a good shot let's look at matus david really quickly uh, he says, or a good basic shot. Vayarim hu yeromim karen memshala laamo. He will raise up the horn of dominance for his people. Vyarbe tehila lechol chasidav and increase praise for all of his pious ones. Amkrovo karv l'shem, the nation that is close to Hashem. Okay, now that last part's a little ambiguous. What does it mean? He will increase praise for all of his pious ones. So this is where the chachmei sarfas come in. Okay. Vayarim Karen Lamo, Umashi Harim Lee Karen, that's Anshii, the one who raised a horn for me and my people, which I don't know if that's like David. I assume that's David, the Python, uh, or the psalmist. He Tehila Lachazdav, it is a praise for all his Hasidim. Kolha Hasidim Yahalalucha, all of the Hasidim will, will praise you. Begam Bene Israel Shame Am Krobo, and also Bene Israel, who are your close nation. Kulchem Hallelujah, Gamze Amar Bishalvaso. Um, all of them will praise you. And this is also said about the time of tranquility, meaning the time of Mashiach. Okay. So the thing I like about this is what he's doing is he's saying, the way he's reading the last passage is, Vayarim Karim Lamo, let's put it all together. God will raise the domin the dominance of his people. Okay. We don't know what the relevance is yet, but that's what it's saying. Tehila l'chol chasidav, there will be praise for all of his chasidim, meaning the chasidi Hashem will engage in praise Hashem. The gam b'nei Yisrael am krova, and also the, the people, 
uh, will, will uh, B'nai Israel will praise Hashem. So he's, he's dividing them into two categories, that everyone gets dominion, but the Hasidim engage in one type of praise, and then the people engage in another type of praise. Okay? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You had an idea? No. Well, oh, you did? Okay. Huh. Uh, well, Sure. <laughs> uh, well, maybe this is saying that, like, when through the Torah, I guess, in the system that Hashem created, like, eventually people will come to, like, recognize I guess, like, the Tis Hasidim in the way that we're recognizing the Torah and the rest of the Yeah. And then, so his Hasidim will be like a praise to him. Yeah. In the eyes of the rest of the Israel. And then they will draw closer. Okay. Uh, I, I I think that's definitely true. Uh, that, just make sure I'm understanding correctly, you, that's explaining just Yodalit on its own? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's exactly mm-hmm. the same because just like the rest of the things are like... Yeah, that's good, that's good. That we look at and we see the strength in them and we praise the Shem on them. So yeah. his, his Hasidim will be like that. Right? Meaning in the eyes of the people. The Meaning the people will see the Hasidim and praise God from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. That's a good, that's a good shot. I like that. So it does fit in. Yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, Doug. Okay. I don't know how I thought this related to Pasuk and Dalton. It doesn't seem like it doesn't. Okay. But uh, the people see at the very least all these different things and different people through their understanding of different areas will find like Shabbat Hashem in different things. Like, say you have like so there's an expert on like sea creatures. And yeah. Wow, by that. So there's an expert on winged birds. Winged birds. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. I don't know that went you and Dom, but I think it's okay. Cool. So I, I I was taking more approach like that. I, I like what you're saying also. I, I guess my only um no, it's not even a question from the parak. It's a question from the Ram. So it's not even a question. I was gonna say the Ram says Gavura. And uh, uh, I, I, uh, I don't quite see the idea of Gavura and Hasidim, but you don't need to be limited to the Gavura. But what I was going to say is, if you look at that Ramam again, um, so he says that the, uh, that the Gavura of Kaddish Baruch and all these things is tamid nikeres lagadol v'katan. It's, always re- it's constantly recognizable by those who are great and those who are small. Now, we hold that the highest level of recognition is Avas Hashem and Yeres Hashem, and that's only recognized by the great. All right? So... So I think that there's a uh, there's an important idea here, which I think actually we talked about when we did this in the Ramam uh, last year, that um, you know there, the, the the Hamon, the average person will look out at a beautiful sunset and see, look how great God is, you know. And I think it's easy for people who have some understanding of science to or like like uh, like Chachma to say like to like to downgrade that, you know. And it is a lesser. Um, a lesser uh, recognition of God's greatness, but it is still a recognition of God's greatness, you know? So the Hasidim will be able to recognize God on the level of appreciating the full Chachma and the real Hod, Hodo Al Eretz B'Shamayim, but B'nai Israel, the rest of B'nai Israel will recognize it on their level because it's framed properly in the nation of that we should, you know, praise Hashem for Maizah Breshis, you know, so it's it's each one on his level, similar to what you're saying of, of specialty, but here it's like, I'm, I guess I'm making the assumption that the Hasidim are on higher level of like learning or recognition of Avas Hashem and Yeres Hashem, you know, yeah. um, so what does this have to do with the whole parak? How does that fit into the parak? Um so you explain how it fits into the parak. So the way I would explain how it fits into the parak is um, that you have, well, okay. <laughs> if we say that the heavenly bodies don't have intellect and it's all up to human beings. So this universal recognition of Hashem's greatness from all of nature will only be complete when Mashiach comes and all of humanity is is engaged in recognizing Hashem and the world is filled with the uh, of Hashem. So it ends, I think, you know, when we, we, we've had a future tense in Tehillim before, and we said that um, future tense can either be uh, what will happen or it could be a bakasha. So um, altar translated as a bakasha, vayar, and may he raise the horn for his people. You know, I forgot how article translates it. Let me see if article translates it that way. Um, I feel like they would. Um, no, they say, and he will, he will raise. Yeah, I think it works better as a bakasha. I mean, it, it works good either way. But like, you know, we are, we, we see all the potential for people recognizing and praising Hashem through every strata of the universe. 
but that's only going to come to uh, into effect when you have God's people in their dominion and the 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 all the people recognizing this. You know, then we'll all like uh, uh, recognize it together. You know, and everyone will be like, and and, and poetically the entire universe we recognize will be like singing praises to Hashem because uh, everyone will be, uh, will, 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 uh, will be, all of the intellects will be engaged in it from all sectors of the universe, you know? Um, cool thing, okay, we'll, we'll go back to see if we can answer the other questions first or in a second, but on my, uh, on my way to Yeshiva tonight, I stopped and said uh, Kirsh Levana, and I realized that Kirsh Levana is a good brachification of this parak. okay, how so? So let's just quickly look at Kirsh Levana. Um, so, oops, that's the wrong one. Um, and this is just Nusach Ashkenaz. Uh, um, um, uh, so, you Hashem are the source of all good, King of the universe, who with his word created the, the utmost heavens, the uh, uh, highest heavens, and through the, the breath of his mouth, all of their array. A, 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 a decree and a time you assign to them and they cannot change their, their assignment. Sasim usmechim. So that's all like ideas that are literally said in our parak, you know, that um, he created everything and he said, he gave them their orders. Okay. Sasim usmechim lasas return konam. They are, they rejoice to do the will of their creator. Now, if you hold that they're sentient beings, then they can actually have some sort of simcha. But if you don't, what do you think the muscle is for they rejoice? They, they never failed to do it. Okay. So yeah, you can say they never failed to do it. To me, Joy is a characterization of like how they do it when they're doing it. Like it's more than just not failing, I think. So, so I think it is like a certain idea of like alacrity and zrizus and like they they do it with pure efficient smoothness. Like they're just like, like perfectly executing it, you know? Um, so I guess it's tapping into the same intuition as yours, but uh, in positive terms. Lasas um, Raton Konam, to do the will of their, of their creator. Poel Emes, Shipu Ulaso Emes. Now, I, I don't know if Poel Emes is describing God, like God is uh, um, the, like if that's another word for maker. They say the worker of truth whose work is truth. Yeah, so they say it's about God. God uh, um, uh, works truth and his action is truth. I think truth here is truth as in like um, faithfulness, meaning like constancy, not uh, like truth. I, I don't see like, you know, Valavana Amar, and to the, the moon he said, that it should renew the crown of its splendor for those born of the womb. Okay, now who is that? Us. Shehem Asidim Lihishadish Kamosa, now it gets poetic, that we will in the future be renewed like it, Right, because the moon symbolizes the waning of Pleistra and then the waxing of Pleistra. Why? Why do we care? To glorify their creator on uh, 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 regarding the name of the glory of his kingdom. Right. So that's expressing the idea that when we reach our pinnacle, the key of that will be recognizing the the uh, the covenant Hashem. You know, through that. And and you think about this every month. Uh, when you associate to the new moon, you know? Um, so I thought that was a good, uh, good little, like, uh, you know, uh, I was like, I was like, oh, I got to stop thinking about Tehillim on the way to Yeshiva to say the bracha. Whoops. <laughs> you know, like it's actually thinking about Tehillim. Yeah. Okay. So. Can what is question this on the parak? Yeah. Oh. On the parak of Tehillim? Yeah. Yeah. Just the, um, what's the like, I mean, I don't know if it makes sense exactly to like compare and contrast, but if we were learning that 11 and 12 are like people who are praising, What's the yeah. difference between that and the end of the parak? That's a good question. Yeah, it's a weird assortment of people, right? Either way, it's a weird assortment of people. Yeah, you definitely. Know? It doesn't yeah. sound like an intellectual categories of people who are doing different kinds of. Right. So it's what's funny. The only one I saw who who puts it in term in intellectual categories is the Radak uh, on the Zakini im Bahurim. Oh, sorry, Zakini im Naarim. Uh, he says. Uh, on 12. Bahurim, sorry. Uh, no, no. Yazakinim imnarim. Shazakinim yilamdum, heach yihalos Hashem. The elders will teach the youth how to praise Hashem. Zehu im, that's what the im is. Kin benarim levadam da'as lahalal. 
the Navarim, the, the Navarim don't alone have the, the knowledge to be able to praise. Therefore, the Zakanim will be with the, uh, the youths to teach them. Um, does he say something about the kings? Um, so the kings, he just says, He mentions the stature in honor and stature in years. Right, so stature and king. That first pasuk is kings and princes and judges is in kavod. Um, he says, So you know, what? it sounds like he's saying, yeah. He says, uh, So it maybe it does tie in because he it sounds like he's saying there will be a unanimous, equal recognition on the part of everybody of Hashem. So, so like you know, almost reminds me of like David and Melech when he was dancing in front of the Aron. And uh, and Michal uh, degraded, said like you're degrading yourself as king, and he says, well if it's for kavod shemaim, then then of course I should be degraded by myself because there's no kavod uh, against kavod shemaim. Like everyone is equal in just recognizing that ki niskav shemol levado, God, only God's name is exalted, you know. Um, and so it's, it, that's why it's giving like a diversity, uh, a diverse group of people that fits in. So that's in Mashiach. Time that's in the time of Mashiach. Yeah, yeah, not now. Yeah, that fits in better with the shot of they will praise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just quickly try to wrap it up. And let's actually like, um, let's add, let's focus on number four because that way we can also kind of get number one. So what is, effect is this supposed to have on us? You know, we said the last parak had the effect of recognizing, uh, of, of, of fostering hope in the Geula and saying how just like God runs all the areas in nature and everything works perfectly, so too, even though it looks like Kali Yisrael is weak, then the same Devar Hashem that runs nature will run us and will eventually like be taken care of like little uh, uh, ravenlings, right? So we thought initially that this had to do with that. It seems like it doesn't have to do with it at all. This seems to be a description of the time of Mashiach. So what, is, what effect is this supposed to have on us? Yeah, maybe it will cause us to come to a greater recognition of the Gvura of Hashem in all of the creation, and through that we will bring it up. Ah, okay, good. So this is the best kind of bakasha, which is a bakasha that raises you into a higher level that makes you worthy of having the bakasha fulfilled, right? <laughs> uh, that's how that's how bakashas work, right? Is uh, that by recognizing this, we are Kla Yisrael right now, saying to Tehillim, recognizing like the ideal state where every corner of the universe proclaims the, 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 the greatness of Hashem. And we're recognizing that we don't have that right now in the nation, but by recognizing it and asking for it, we make ourselves worthy or, or closer to God bringing about the Gula to actually like bring this to uh, bring this about, you know? Yeah. Another related thought, I yeah. think about this with Kone Hakol. Yeah. Uh, it gives you more to like every every object in the universe than to look at these different things and try to and see what's in it. Yeah. What to yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that really is uh, you know, the um uh what do you call the purpose of see I, I i feel like i've heard people say why don't we make a bracha on like a beautiful sunrise or beautiful sunset you know like why don't we make a bracha on like like clouds that are beautiful you know so the answer is for whatever reason because i'll decide to only set up brachos on like the rarer events but this is what we say every day which is the brachos on like all the creation like it's you say this every day and you're supposed to then go out and take this into your mentality as you like look at stuff you know um so so yeah um okay so again i think this is the general idea of the parak i'm sure there's more we can do uh answer like other questions and like if you have other questions or other answers great i mean i think we we, we touched on, on all the main points and so i think what i'd like to do we're so close now i, I think i do want to do 149 uh next and then the only thing left will be ashray and ken and i are in agreement that i think ashray we have to do pasuk by pasuk almost like a uh like mishlep so can, you know not taking like one session per thing but uh yeah yeah so um so the plan will be for now is on thursday night i want to give a sheer dealing with either yosef's or Oren's question or both of them in the chat about like um about um uh scientific inaccuracy in brachos what do we make of that and like maybe stuff about like the new sakatfila and like the accuracy in general and like where it came from but i think i want to focus more on yosef's question um and then 
start working on Ken with Ken on 149 for next week and we'll see how far we get and whether we do that or not. And I had this idea that I wanted to do something about Modim or Mismar La Soda for Thanksgiving, but I don't know, I haven't even started really preparing it yet. Yeah, yeah, so Levy and I started working on Modim, but uh, we I can never tell how long that's gonna take. So if we don't make it time for Thanksgiving, then whatever. Hopefully it's always- oh, Exactly, yeah. Okay, have a good night.